me play devil's advocate here because I'm with you. I like the Jets a lot. And if you look at their offensive weapons, one guy we don't talk about, and I was on him all last year. That doesn't sound right. But Brees, <laughs> I was on this guy all last season. <laughs> Woo, boy, what a run. What a run for this guy. Brees Hall. We yeah. forget about Brees. We know about Garrett Wilson. We know that Aaron Rodgers has brought in Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, his guys. But Brees Hall is a guy who he may have won Offensive Rookie of the Year before Garrett Wilson did had he not torn up his knee. So that's another piece to the puzzle. My only question is, if I'm talking about being devil's advocate here, is there were some throws last year that Aaron Rodgers normally makes that he missed. And I do think that Aaron Rodgers is going to turn 40 in the fall. Do you think that we are that we're giving him a touch too much credit because of what we saw Tom Brady do? Because Tom Brady played until he was 45, but Tom Brady is and has always been an anomaly. Right. Most quarterbacks absolutely hit a wall right before 40. Do you think there's a possibility Aaron Rodgers does that? I don't think so, but I think it could be a thing. I don't think so either because I think the arm strength is still there. Mm -hmm. Because when you see older quarterbacks that kind of have lost it, Mr. like remember Burns. Drew Brees at the end. Remember Peyton Manning at yeah. the end. Where, like, you could tell when they released the ball. And yeah. even Tom Brady last year, there were some throws where, like, wow, that yeah. was, he's lost some of the velocity on his fastball. But Tom Brady was, what, 45? Yeah. And even the year before, at 44, he led the league in passing. So I think we're still, like, a couple years away mm -hmm. from that conversation. And Aaron Rodgers has said just as such. Mm -hmm. He has said, like, I'm not here for a one-year deal. I'm not here for a two-year thing. Like, I want to be here for a little bit. And I want to, like, make myself valuable to this franchise. Uh, so I think that the age is not really a factor just yet. And clearly he's somebody who at least tries to take care of his body. Yes. Like, sometimes he is a little misinformed, it seems right. like, on some things. But he is at least trying. He's not somebody out there partying, smoking cigarettes, <laughs> smoking marijuana cigarettes. Sir, <laughs> are you smoking marijuana? <laughs> My good God. No, he's not. He seems like, I feel like he just went through it in Green Bay. And I don't know how much of this, we've talked about this. I don't know how much of it is real, how yeah. much of it is I want the spotlight. But I do feel like part of him was legitimately trying to figure things out or what he wanted yeah. or who he is. I think he probably leaned into that too much. But he does seem like he seems more grounded. Yeah, I think he seems more normal. That's the yeah, word that I've been using. He yeah. seems like a normal quarterback. Right. Who is in that same price category? Isn't it Trevor uh, Lawrence? Lawrence, yeah. Who I so, think is a, a great a great pick this season. I like both of those, but would you rather? Who do you pick? You only got to pick one. I guess I'd go with... Because <sighs> Trevor Lawrence, like, I think he still has some upside left to go. Yes. But Aaron Rodgers, I wouldn't be shocked if he was MVP. I, I think that's right. Although Trevor Lawrence really came on last year, if you look at his last, I forget the the spectrum, like five or six games, mm -hmm. his stats were out of this world. I think I might go Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is going to have the opportunity because they're a passing offense mm -hmm. for sure. But I think the Jets are going to be a passing offense too because why would they trade for this guy, a quarterback that they have not had the likes of in decades? Mm-hmm and not use him. And plus, Aaron Rodgers is one of the best in the league at adjusting at the line of scrimmage and calling audibles. It doesn't feel like, even if he's going to a new team, don't you feel like learning a new offense shouldn't be that difficult for him? So I, I don't like, think so. That's what I'm saying. I feel like he's, say what you want about him, but I feel like it, when it comes to football, he's an intelligent guy. No question. Aaron Rodgers knows the, the only, literally the only knock on Aaron Rodgers is that he doesn't have another chip. That's that he, just he about sucks it. as a person. That he, and also, <laughs> yes, he's no, he doesn't. He's a weirdo. He's he's kind of exhausting to listen to sometimes. Yes. But in the football scheme of things, the knocks usually come in the postseason. Yes. Because wouldn't that be what Packers fans say? Absolutely. They say, okay, if we had this Hall of Fame quarterback, then why don't we have more championships? Yeah. Well, I will say this: for all of the complaining he did in Green Bay. The Jets gave him everything he wanted. Even Nathaniel Hackett returned as right. his offensive coordinator. So they can say, oh, Aaron didn't make any demands. Okay, you only brought in two of his favorite receivers and his offensive coordinator. But, hey, this is just the Jets. Like, come on. Do you think Drake May is on pace for another great season? And do you think he has a good shot at winning the Heisman? 
I think he has a decent shot. I think the perception of the ACC is not is not good enough um, for him. I think he's going to have to overcome that sort of thing. This feels like an SEC Big Ten award, really. Like it's it just it, this is what it comes down to: is that college football essentially has two really good conferences, and everybody else is like, oh yeah, they're kind of there too. Um, but yeah, if you were to tell me who's the best candidate from this conference to win the Heisman, it would be Drake May. He's got some new weapons that he kind of has to worry about. Um, it's ironic we see so many transfers from inside this conference. Georgia Tech's number one wide receiver transferred to North Carolina. Kent State's uh, wide receiver uh, transferred to North Carolina. Um, we saw uh, Phil Dracovic go from Boston College to Pittsburgh. We saw you know, Brendan Armstrong go from Virginia to NC State. I think it's fascinating to see all these intra-conference transfers because we know how much that's frowned upon in some of the other places. How have the new rules as far as the, the pitch clock and the batter's clock, how have that changed your model going into this season? Yeah, going into this season, I spent a lot of time kind of researching that and trying mm-hmm. to uh, account for it in the model. And and the good part is that we had a lot of these rules kind of tested out in the minor leagues the last couple of years. So we could look at the minor leagues and say, okay, this is the effect that the pitch clock had. This is the effect that, you know, the, the base has had or whatever it may be. And uh, this is the, the effect of the, you know, the, the shift rules changing. And so we kind of knew coming into the year that stolen bases were going to go way up because that's what we saw in the minor leagues. And so that's what, you know, I kind of projected coming into this year. And that's what we've seen. Um, the shift, again, we were able to identify, you know, the types of players that maybe would be more affected or less affected. And, and you try to account for it as best you can. And then as the season goes on, you get more data from this season and you just keep folding that into, you know, to form your best, you know, your best guess. I don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, she is here. You can see us on Twitch live from Nashville, Tennessee, but in studio with me is Chelsea Messenger. Yay. I don't believe it. You're a real person. Where's our studio audience? Right? Dead silence. <laughs> Dead silence. Tough crowd. It is a tough. We have Bill Rowland, our executive producer over here. Yay! Yay! Bill. Yay! Maddie's. Yay, Yay Maddie. Matt. We got Matt out here. So we're in studio here for a couple days. We got a huge happy hour tonight. And the rumor is, of course, we saw each other last night at happy hour. The rumor is you had an amazing flight here to DC, like the best flight ever on Southwest, right? It was not amazing, even though I will say I took the same route as, like, DeAndre Hopkins did. Because remember, he flew Southwest. Oh, yeah. So he's taking the stigma out of (laughs) flying Southwest because he did sign with the Titans. Uh, But listen, so I'm relaxing in my seat, and it feels, you know, amazing. I got the window seat. Uh, Everything's good. I had two nuns on the flight, so I was like, all right, this plane's not going down. We got nuns on the flight. Uh, So I put my elbow on the armrest, and then I feel something. I'm like, huh, I wonder what that is. I look back, and there is a bare foot with hair oh on it God. that is touching the back of my elbow and I immediately like recoil and gasp and everybody's like just looking at me I'm like do you see this foot and everybody's like oh my gosh because these are things that you see online that yeah. happen on planes and you're like that didn't happen like those people are making that up but this person literally had a foot on my armrest and note how I said armrest not foot rest. Uh, they didn't oh get the my. memo. I put my purse there. I was like nudging the foot out of the way. Uh, still didn't make a difference. Uh, but luckily, that was the only part of my flight that was bad. Although it was a big part that was bad. What if it was Aaron Rodgers' foot? Remember when he showed the camera his foot last year and you look over and you're like, who's, oh, it's Aaron Rodgers. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I feel like his feet are pretty hairy too. Oh, uh, I think he has a lot of hair. Although, have Mm -hmm. you noticed how clean-shaven and how clean he looks lately?